Ringer Four Star Playhouse presents Dick Powell, Charles Boyer, David Niven, Ida Lupino. What's the occasion? Do I need an excuse to visit the man I love? Never, but I sent you home an hour ago. But your brother is back. George? So soon? Yes, he's waiting for us at the house. Oh. Oh, oh my lamb. Did I break it? No. Ah, well, I guess that did it. Doesn't matter. It's only an old kerosene lamb. Better take my hand. One of the advantages of being blind, you can see just as well in the dark. Let's sit down for a moment. Now, ah, what is it, darling? Something to do with George's trip. He has found another doctor, hasn't he? Yes, Carl. A Dr. Patera. George brought him back with him. Another one. There is always another one. But this isn't like the others. This time, George has great hope that Dr. Patera can... new doctor, George has great hope. Didn't you have, Carl? Didn't you ever? Not for a long time now. If you're not going to allow yourself to hope... Vivian, I can't be disappointed. I've thought it over again and again, very carefully, very soberly. And I'm not going to... To tie you down to, to my little world here. This retreat I have fashioned for myself, this house, these woods, they may be all right for a blind man, but... Carl, we've settled all this. For a person with eyes. I can only guess at it, of course, but I know it would soon suffocate you. I've always heard that the groom-to-be gets frightened just before the wedding date approaches. It's no good, Vivian. Shut off from the rest of the world with a... But a half man, a lover who can't even see your loveliness. Oh, Carl, a Carl. A man who can't even... They're waiting for it. All right. Let's get it over with. These romantic writers, they seem to think life is some sort of light-hearted game. But you know differently, don't you, Doctor? Only too well, Mr. Barry. George? Here. Carl, this is Dr. Petier. Ah, George, you never give up, do you? I promise you, this is the last. Does it mean that you have finally found the miracle worker again? Perhaps we had better establish at the outset, despite your brother's apparent faith in me, I am not the miracle worker. That's refreshing. I have been called other things, though. Mountebank. Charlatan, money grubber, faker. <laughs> I could go on almost indefinitely. But you are none of those things, are you, Doctor? Perhaps not all of those things, Mr. Barry. Your sherry, sir. Oh, thank you, Hodgins. Dr. Petira's methods are not orthodox, Carl. Most important physicians laugh at him and refuse to believe in his cures. But he has succeeded in many cases just like yours. Other people who were blind since they were born. I've seen some of these cases with my own eyes. It is gratifying to find such loyal support in a colleague, but I am not prepared to say I can cure your blindness, Mr. Barry. Not until I have examined you. Preparing a way out already, eh, Doctor? Carl, Dr. Petier didn't come all this way just to be insulted. Oh, your brother's cynicism is quite understandable. And in case you are wondering, Mr. Barry, I am getting a handsome fee for my trouble. You know, I think I like you, Doctor. Shall we get the examination over with? So you can collect your fee and go back home? With your assistance, Doctor. All 
right, Doctor. I... I'll open the windows, get some air. Well? You are keeping my brother and Miss Ellington in an agony of suspense, Doctor. It is up to you. But I may not be taking the trip back home as quickly as you expected. Come, come now, what do you mean? What do you mean it's up to me? I mean, I believe I can cure your blindness. But? You are, of course, unaware of what it means. The idea of seeing again for the first time in your life. You have made a cozy little nest here for yourself. I suppose, in some ways, you are happier than many of us who have had our sights since birth. You have what all of us are after. Security and a kind of peace. That peace and security can be shattered. It seems to me you do protest too much, Doctor. Many of us live in fear of losing our sight. I think perhaps you are afraid of gaining yours. And there are other considerations. The operation will be an extremely painful one. There are no opiates I can administer for this kind of surgery. I'm afraid that's right, Carl. Also, there will be a tediously long and difficult post-operative period. The patient will have to lie in bed almost immobile for at least three weeks. And no matter how successful the surgery is, there is still one big question mark. The true condition of the inner eye. Just what are you trying to say, Doctor? It is possible that Mr. Barry will have his sight for only a few moments, then lose it again, permanently. Always a joker in the deck, eh, Doctor? That's why it is up to you. You cannot begin to realize what temporary sight would mean to you. A chance only to learn what you are missing by not being able to see. Yes. A sort of uh, exquisite torture designed to last a lifetime. Exactly. If your eyesight should fade in those first few moments, nothing on earth will be able to restore it. But of course, it may not fade. The operation may be a complete success. I can guarantee nothing. Vivian. I was worried about you. Gone so long. I had a lot of thinking to do. Of course. And right now, all you can think of is what it'll be like if the operation is not a success. Won't be a failure either, since there will be no operation. Why? He told you why. I've worked out a life out here that is. Well, good enough. But if I should get my sight for a few moments and then lose it forever, this life of mine might never be good enough again. And what about all the years that George spent studying medicine so that he could become a doctor and maybe help you in some way? I warned him against that. I told him it was hopeless. You owe him nothing then? Yes, of course. Of course I do. I owe him a great deal. That is why I'm not going to let him go to the further expense of an operation that would undoubtedly be a failure. All right, Carl. It's your life. Live it your way. But live it alone. Vivian, where are you going? I'm saying goodbye, Carl. Goodbye? I'm going to follow your advice. I'm going to find myself a complete man, a man with eyes. Vivian. I'm going to find myself a man who can appreciate me. Every morning I wake up and I comb my hair just so for my lover. I pick out a special dress, just the right color for my lover. But my lover never sees me. I walk through the streets of the town and I feel the eyes of the men following me. 
And I think, if only Carl could see me. If only I could see that look in his eyes. Yes. Just to be able to look at your face. Even for a moment. Oh, no. No, no. It didn't matter that the man I loved was blind. He loved me even though he couldn't see me. That's better than all the staring eyes of all the men in the world. But darling, don't you understand? Now there's a chance, if only a chance. And you're afraid. You're running back to this little world of yours. Oh, darling, don't you understand? Yes. Yes, I understand. If I let Petira go now without, without trying, I'll regret it for the rest of my life. Yes, Carl. Oh, yes. Well, they're waiting for us, Vivian. <laughs> I'm not so sure this operation won't be a mixed blessing for me. For you? Yes, you don't know what I look like. You're perfectly satisfied now, but... That's one thing I'm certain won't be a disappointment. Very gallant. But you have no way of knowing. That's true. I have no way of knowing what a face, or anything else for that matters, really looks like. I can begin to imagine, for instance, what color is. Well, uh, color is... Uh... Try blue. Blue? Well, uh, blue is sort of, um, uh, blue is a cool color. The various shades of blue Cool? Are... Like, uh, the breeze in the evening or, or the feel of the grass in the early morning? No, no, grass is green. Green? Yes, uh, green is, um, <laughs> uh... <laughs> Forget colors. What about, uh, shapes, perspective? Look, describe a bird to me. I heard them sing by the hour, and people have tried to tell me what they look like. Well, uh, uh, there are various kinds of birds, but most birds are, are small enough to hold in your hand. Their bodies are kind of cylindrical, and they have small heads and bright, sparkling eyes. Sparkling? Describe sparkling. Oh, sparkling? Uh, uh, well, uh... Well, Carl, how do you feel? Are you ready? Yes, yes, Joel, of course, I'm ready. Please, keep remembering how very much I love you. Good morning, Mr. Barry. Good morning, Doctor. August 17th, the French emperor, who had arrived at Chalon on the previous day, decided after a council of war to appoint some popular man, preferably Trochu, as governor of Paris. There'll be no more of that. Oh? High time you learn to read like other people with eyes. <laughs> it's a little premature, isn't it? I've still got to wait until tomorrow before that can start happening. Not premature for someone as clever as I. What's that? A set of children's building blocks. Oh. A sort of uh, braille for the almost not blind. Hmm? Uh-huh. Clever. Hmm? Here's the letter A. A? You know, I've learned my ABCs as a child in Braille. But this is the first time I had any idea what they looked like to you. And here is the letter B. <laughs> it's funny. In many ways, it will be like being a child again. In many ways, like being a child for the first time. Good morning, miss. Oh, miss, Dr. Boray was asking about you a moment ago. Does he want to see me? Yes, miss. Right away. I'll be a moment, 
George, what is it? Petira is gone. Gone? He left last night. Told no one, just packed his bags and left. Hodgins discovered his empty room this morning. Gone. Carl, have you told Carl? Uh, he left this. This will come as a great shock to you, and I am truly sorry. However, my sudden and completely unexpected departure should have no effect whatsoever on your brother's chances. A message has been brought to me by special courier. A young man in the city of Marseille is so despondent over his blindness that he has twice tried to take his own life. His father implores me to come immediately on a ship leaving port tonight. Since there's nothing further I can do for your brother, I see no point in denying this urgent appeal. I don't believe it. He's a liar, a liar. I admonish you only to wait until tomorrow afternoon before removing the bandages from your brother's eyes. What happens then is up to fortune. He was. He told us he was a charlatan. Perhaps maybe this is the truth. A charlatan, faker, fraud. Running away in the night so that he wouldn't have to face us when we learned the truth. He knew if he woke me, I wouldn't let him go. Magnificent surgeon, wonderful man. Courage, integrity. What's going to happen to Carl now? All that pain, so, his hope so high. I forced him into it. I tricked him into it. Please, Vivian, let me tell Carl. I think the best thing is to read him Petera's letter. The sooner he knows. All right. But I want to be there. What happens then is up to fortune. P.S. You may tell your brother, so that he can keep his concept of me intact, that the gentleman from Marseille has offered a fabulous sum for my services. Your servant, Bruno Petiera. Mm -hmm. Sounds like Petiera, all right. Come, come now. I seem to detect a strange note in this room. Do you think Petiera is not telling the truth? It's just, we were worried how you would feel about it. <sighs> Silly. <laughs> it changes nothing. I'm glad you're taking it this way, Carl. Now the way to take it. Now, if you'll both be kind enough to leave the patient, it's time for my morning nap. I shall need plenty of strength when these blinkers come off tomorrow. time you've been in front of that mirror today. And you? Are you all ready for your brother to have his first look at you? <laughs> he won't bother to look at me. And now, if you think your nose is on straight. On time for the unveiling. Yes, Carl, we are both with you now. Are you as frightened as I am? Well, <laughs> I'm probably more worried about your reaction to what I'm going to ask both of you to do. Ask us to do. I've been sitting in that chair all day, thinking about this. I am frightened. More frightened than I've ever been in all my life. It's very natural, darling. I've been trying to find a way to say this, to, to explain myself without hurting both of you, but, well, I want to be alone when the bandages come off. Alone? There's nothing to taking them off. I can handle that easily, but I'm not sure I can handle myself and, uh, well, when I, when I open my eyes and perhaps see for the first time, Vigera was right. This is a very personal thing. I have no way of knowing what I'll do, how I'll feel. But Carl, that's why you need us. 
please try to understand. This is a time for a man to be with himself. His own private thoughts and emotions. Just that seeing and seeing the two people closest to me all at once might be too much. Carl, I think I understand. Thank you, darling. If you should find, as Dr. Petiera said might happen, that you can only see for a few minutes. If my sight should begin to fade, I'll call you both immediately. You won't keep us waiting too long. As soon as I'm ready, I'll call. You can see. Yes. Yes. But it's fading. Where is Vivian? I want to see Vivian. Carl, Carl. So beautiful. But you... I can see perfectly. And a moment ago, if everything was fading. Dr. Petiera said that if it faded, it was the dusk. The dusk? Yes, the sun has gone down. You didn't know about night and day. You thought your eyesight was fading. The dusk. Yes, of course. The darkness wasn't in my eyes. It wasn't in my eyes at all. Never again. The darkness will never be in your eyes again. Thank you. 